Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we're kind of stepping a little bit away from the typical makeup routine that we normally do and as you can see from the title we're going to be doing the first installment of which is going to be either a four or five part series all about YouTube. Everything it takes to get from idea to video and everything in between. I'm going to go through technology and my setup and my storage and how I film and thumbnails and all of that fun stuff at some point along the way and I am going to create a playlist and I'm going to link that right here. So once all the videos are up you can kind of find them all in one place. So if that's something you're into make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week. That is the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. Also make sure to leave a comment down below with what questions you have specifically because this is only only part one and there's gonna be a bunch more more importantly I will make sure to respond to you guys in the comment section if there is anything that any of these videos overlook so without further ado let's jump right into the video all right so today's video is gonna be majorly focused on my setup so we're gonna talk about my computer my camera the lighting everything it takes to get to the point where I'm ready to sit down and film a video. Some of the other videos are gonna be on content curation, my studio tour, which might actually be in this video, haven't decided yet, filming 101, so how we actually do what I'm doing, and then we're gonna be going through some tips and tricks on how to make sure that your YouTube video is not obnoxiously redundant, because something I have found, especially 200 plus videos in, is I can start ranting, and how I edit is how I kind of dumb it down to the point where I can post it without feeling like I ranted for six hours. So as I said, today is going to be on the setup itself. So we're going to insert some B-roll. I do have Brandon over there doing some random candids and pictures and videos as we're filming this, just so I can kind of cut some pictures together. But first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be lighting, because unfortunately, lighting is not always the most possible thing to grapple with so i personally hate filming with natural light i know there's a lot of people who can post up in front of a window and call it a day for me lighting shifts and this is a makeup channel so for me i kind of need consistent lighting so i actually have a ring light and two box lights right here i'm going to give you guys a quick little b-roll of what that looks like um the reason that i need all three of these lights is because of how it balances the face so Brandon, if you don't mind just shutting off the box lights first. So just filming with a ring light, even if I turn this up to full blast, all this does is cause, like you can see my highlight is kind of coming forward a little bit. All this is doing is providing lighting on the center subject. This is causing me to be illuminated, but not enough to where you're really getting the full effect. This is just box lights with no ring light. As you can see, I am illuminated and I look like I am the subject of what we are looking at. However, my highlights are a little bit less intense and you really get this dullness of the quality of footage. Once the ring light is back on, everything is illuminated, everything looks bright, it's really easy to watch and look at. Plus, every time I turn, the way the lighting is set up helps to make everything come forward. The reason my box lights are on the side is this is what we're calling fill light. So what this is, is it's giving me a sideways light, so that way there's no shadows on my face. Can you just shut off this light, please? You see how when there's light coming from one side of my face, it causes a shadow everywhere else? This window behind me is horrible for making that shadow happen. So that's one of the issues I have with natural light. You can put it back on, please. When I have natural light, I'm constantly fighting moving lighting and shadows on the face. By illuminating from the sides and the front, even if I put like my hand in front of my face, there is still enough light coming from all of the other sources that it doesn't cause any shadows on the face. All of the equipment I use today is going to be listed down below. I have an Amazon shop set up so you can see my ring light, my camera, my computer, box lights, everything. These are the exact models that I use. So if you're looking to start a YouTube channel and you have no idea where to start with on technology, these are the products I've used. I've had my ring light, I want to say a year and a half to two years. So we're pushing 200 videos with the ring light. And then the box lights I brought in shortly after. So maybe 150 videos with those. Again, always have my box lights right on the side of me and I always have my ring light front and center. Something that's really important to remember when you are setting up your studio space is that it is okay for it to evolve. I'm gonna drop a clip that is really cringeworthy of one of my earliest videos of me sitting in a room down the hall in front of a giant vanity mirror and behind me it was a little more of a lifestyle setup which means that you were able to see the entire room behind me. 
At this point in time, I've kind of moved to the point where I wanted to have more of a studio setup. So right now I'm filmed in front of a window just because I find that this gives you guys the, I almost said like the illusion, but it's not an illusion. This is kind of showing you, you guys are in my house right now. Like this is a curtain blocking a window. This is just a corner of a room inside my house. I like this because it kind of gives you that feel of time of day. You can see what's going on. It still feels like it is authentic. It feels like it is a house because, again, we are in my home right now. However, it doesn't feel like a studio setup. I didn't want things to feel too stale, especially coming out of filming in an actual bedroom or, in that case, filming room. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 current beauty favorites. I also, and you guys will notice, uh, this is a corner behind me. I love that for depth of view. So when I first moved into this room, I'm going to insert another mini clip. This window right here, I was actually centered in front of, and the camera was that way facing here. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. And what that did was it gave a very flat backdrop, which was kind of cool in some videos because it really felt like I'm in a professional studio setup. However, by having that flatness behind me, it kind of lost some of that depth. Plus, by having that window directly behind me, I could not film during the day because if there was too much light behind me, it would completely wash out the footage. Or if it was too dark at night, it would give this weird shadowed effect behind me, which was really cool around October last year, but after that, it got a little grim looking. So next we're going to talk about cameras. So the first, I want to say 100 videos I did, I filmed entirely on my phone. Um, this is the iPhone X. I did not start on this. I was actually using the 8 Plus. So I did not have, I mean at the time it was a great model, but I was filming on an iPhone. I had it propped up on a tripod right in front of me using the back camera. And I was able to mirror it to my MacBook iMac. No, I was right the first time. MacBook. I was able to mirror it to my MacBook so that I can see the footage without the actual front-facing camera looking at me. And that worked for what I needed it to do. Um, about holiday time last year, I finally bit the bullet and invested in a camera. A lot of the issues was when I was filming, I had to make sure to put my phone on airplane mode because if anybody started calling me, it would stop recording and I would lose whatever footage I was in. So by upgrading to a camera, I can now have lists on my phone. I can Google things while I'm filming. You guys have seen it a million times where I'll be in the middle of something and I'll just be like, how much does this cost? And I'll just look it up. Having my phone accessible was a little bit, I, I was ready. I was ready to upgrade to the next setup. So I am filming on the Canon T6i. It is really nice because it actually mirrors directly into the computer I keep right behind me. I am going to show you guys in real time while I'm filming this. Directly behind my camera, I have this little window right here, which is the Canon EOS Studio. This allows me, and you guys can kind of see this, it allows me to mess with my footage settings. I can change my ISO, my aperture, I can autofocus myself, I can play with the white balance, I can really change any settings I need to change on the computer while I'm filming. This is helpful because it allows me to really see what's going on directly behind me. I did get a lot of, I want to say, not complaints, they were more suggestions, a while back. I used to have my camera in front of me and the computer off to the side and people kept saying that it was really distracting, that I kept looking down to the corner of my monitor. So the only way I was able to do that, because I really like get neurotic and I can't stop checking out my monitor, is I put the monitor directly behind the camera and I centered it so that when I'm looking directly in the lens, I can still see my face directly behind the camera, which allows me to get a little bit better perspective and make sure I'm always in focus. Nothing is worse than filming a video only to find that all of the footage is blurry. In a rush, I have accidentally or not so accidentally uploaded videos that were a little out of focus just because it wasn't that bad, but it's definitely noticeable. Put that time into the quality of your footage and it will definitely pay off for you. And the last piece of actual equipment that I utilize while I'm filming is going to be right behind you. Well, I guess behind you because you guys are watching me. And that is my iMac. Um... This was probably one of the biggest purchases I had to make in order to get my studio up and running. If you don't have an iMac to link to, you can totally use a MacBook. I know that the EOS program does work on PCs as well. However, I am most comfortable using Mac products, so I did go with the iMac. I do all of my editing on that computer as well, which I do in Final Cut Pro. 
it's just so much easier, especially because I do have an iMac, I have an Apple Watch, I have an iPhone. It's so much easier for me to transition from one to the next if I'm working on multiple products. I can, you know, start editing a thumbnail here and instantly open it up on the other computer. It's just easier for me if I have everything kind of tied together. I know that there are people who either for financial reasons or they just don't like Apple and they prefer PC or Galaxy or Samsung products or whatever. Use whatever you're comfortable with. I just find that as a whole, it is so much easier if everything is consistent from one to the next. So I'm going to insert specs down below or of like, you guys can see the link down below of the specific computer I picked. It is the 27 inch, which is absolutely massive. And the reason for that is it is so far away. I wanted to be able to use it as a full on monitor. If I go into full screen, I can see crystal clear 4k quality. I upgraded the graphics card and everything here is super easy for me to work off of. Plus, I don't do it as often as I used to, but whenever I do Instagram Lives or Facebook Lives, I can actually mirror the footage here, and because I got the larger screen, I can see multiple screens at the same time, so I can see what my camera is capturing versus the delay if there is one with Facebook. That is something I've noticed is there's usually like a 15 second delay between what happens in real time and what goes on to Facebook Live, so I can kind of see how far behind Facebook is, because again, if I'm answering comments or I'm in real time, it makes it a little bit easier for me to know what they are seeing. So I've gone into this a few times, but I'm gonna show you guys what is in front of me while I'm filming, just so you guys have a little bit of a better understanding of exactly what I'm looking at as I am filming. So while I'm filming, this is exactly what I look at. This is everything that I need in order to basically produce anything I'm doing. Again, this is a makeup channel, so a lot of the technology, that's kind of universal to whatever you're planning on filming. However, my mic and my camera are centered directly in front of me, which allows me to, again, film. I do have a hand mirror and a stand mirror here so that I can get close-ups or I can kind of see how things are looking far away. Sometimes the camera, it's a little further away, so if I want to get closer to make sure things look good, that's that. This is a system I've actually mentioned a couple times before, but to my left are all of my clean brushes. To the right, I have all of my dirty brushes. So I cleaned my brushes yesterday. All of these are brushes that I used today to get ready. I do have a bottle right here. This is the Cinema Secrets Makeup Remover. Squirt this right on my brush, swirl it on whatever towel I have here. Instantly cleans and dries whatever brushes I'm using. I do have my mouse and my trackpad. When I'm filming, it's easier for me to just grab the mouse and do what I need to do. While I'm editing, I prefer the trackpad because I have a little more control. Then to my left, I have basically my essentials. So I have my favorite eye brushes, the things I grab for time and time again. And then Brandon makes fun of me because there's about 120 brushes here. I have more brushes on the other side of the room that are kind of just brushes I don't really reach for. But here I have foundation brushes, under eye and cheek brushes, more eye brushes, and then powder brushes. I also do keep my beauty blender handy. This was used today, so it's kind of gross, but that will get cleaned before I use it next. My eyelash curler and any brow products are right here. And then this we've gone through before, but I will give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth makeup tour in a minute. Directly to the left of my filming setup, I do have two sets of Alex drawers. I have a tall nine drawer, and down here under the desk, I do have a short six drawer. So just going through, top drawer storage. This is actually anything I need for Brandon. On the rare occasion, I get to do his makeup and torture him. These are some of my and his favorite products in his tones. I do also keep makeup wipes up here because you never know when you're gonna need to fix something. Next drawer down, this is primers. I do also keep my colored contacts on hand. I don't use them as often as I used to, but these are the products that I consistently am using as primers. I do have these sorted by blurring, smoothing, these are more of your like hydrating, prolonging. These are things I use on the eye area. And then these are things that I'm kind of just playing with or things in travel or sample sizes. Then in here I do have foundations and concealers. All of these are my high-end foundations. Back here are my affordable or drugstore. Same thing with concealers. We've got our luxury or prestige high-end and then my more affordable concealers. Down here we have Pressed powders, setting sprays, and loose powders. Loose powders, I've said it before, is probably my most overly, 
I mean, they go all the way in the back and they wrap around. Some of them are stacked too high. I have more than I think any one person ever needs. These are my eye accessory drawers. So I have rhinestones and pearls, cream shadows, glitters. Down in there, there's even more glitters, single shadows, glitter palette. I also have, these are all brand new lashes back here. And up here, I have lashes that have been worn. So these are used lashes. Those are new lashes. And this is where I keep the lashes that I don't necessarily grab for every day, but they are still lashes I do really like. Anything I don't like, I just get rid of. The next four drawers down are gonna be eyeshadow. So top drawer is gonna be my typical favorites. These are all Anastasia. You guys know I'm obsessed with the Jackie Ina. I do have my Jeffree Star palettes back here and mixed in throughout. These are just the ones that I tend to gravitate for most frequently. Next one down is my runner-ups. These are all palettes that, again, I do love. I just don't really grab for them as much as the ones right above. You guys know the Kathleen Lights and ColourPop Shadows are ones I love. This is actually a Marc Jacobs palette Brandon got me that I wore today. Just because it's in this drawer doesn't mean I don't use it. I just use it less frequently than these ones. And then in the back, I have some larger Morphe palettes, my Juvia's Place palettes, things that are a little too large to stand up. This is a drawer entirely dedicated to palettes and items that have come in BoxyCharms. I keep these pretty much together. Like I love this palette. This could be a top drawer palette, but if I'm looking for it, I know it's going to be easiest for me to find it with the rest of my Boxy items. More desirable ones or ones that I love even more stay in the very front. Ones I don't love as much go towards the back. And then this is like an overflow drawer of either things that have gotten to the point where they are so old and dry they are probably expired and I can't get rid of them because I'm a hoarder or things that I don't necessarily grab for as often. I also do drop limited edition items down here because like I loved this palette, it's beautiful, but because it was limited edition, I try not to use it too frequently in videos because I don't love using items that you guys can't get a hold of. Top drawer right here, we've got mascaras, liquid liners in the back, gel liners, brow products, and these are where I keep my favorite lashes, the ones that I consistently grab for all the time. You guys know New Bounce and Bellas and Mykonos from Lily Lashes are like my ride or die favorites. Um, I actually really love the Madame Wispy from Coco. I've worn these way too many times and I do need to get a new pair. This drawer, I am so proud of how organized it is, but glitter top lipsticks, glosses that have no shimmer, they're all, or no glitter, just shine, glosses that have glitter to them, liquid lipsticks in colors that are not nude, liquid lipsticks in nudes, liners, more liners, and then cream lipsticks sorted by, I don't really know how they're sorted, they're just sorted so they all fit. Then in here we have cheek. So I have blush, bronzer, these are all contour and bronzer palettes, more blush up here, the giant fan, Highlight. This is probably my favorite drawer. I've got my loose highlighters. I've got, these are the ones I grab for the most frequently. Then I have, I, I honestly don't even know how to say how these are sorted. It's just by how they fit. You guys know, like, I don't think I will ever be able to part with this. It was limited edition, but it is so good. So that stays front and center because I use that all the time. And then I'm actually going to stay out of this drawer, but this is like overflow items, things I have for upcoming giveaways, extras or things that I don't necessarily plan on using right away. And then these are my everyday grabbables. So setting sprays, lippies, some glosses. I do like to keep an under eye cream and a mattifier as well as a lip balm. My MAC paint pot because it is the only eye primer I actually trust. Back here I have liners, both gel and liquid, and then brow products that I use often. Top three primers, my favorite concealers, high-end foundations, affordable foundations, my powders, Charlotte Tilbury's Four Micro Smooth, Jeffree Star, Too Faced, and Cody Airspun. Those are like my holy grail powders. This is gonna be contour and bronzers all mixed together. 
I try to keep a nice assortment of high-end and affordable mixed in so that I don't kind of reach for the same one over and over. You guys know that this travel size Too Faced Milk Chocolate is like the best nose contour shade. And then blushes. I have an Hourglass palette from Last Holiday. that This is like the best universal face palette I own. And then for blush, Glass Seasons Tarte Blush Book. Holiday is coming. If you can get your hands on whatever their blush book for this season is going to be, you guys will love that. The Alamar Colorite Blush Trio. This one is medium tan. These two mixed together is like my go-to all summer long. And then I do have slightly more illuminating as opposed to these, which are a little more matte down here. These are both going to be high shine. I'm wearing the Laura Geller one today, which did come in a boxy charm. And the Milani Bake Blush, because this is the only affordable blush I've found that I think I am so obsessed with that I can't put away. So that is, in a nutshell, my filming setup and everything that I need as far as physical items in front of me before I can start recording a video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said in the intro, let me know down below if you have any questions you wanted me to address or any other specifics you wanted to know. Like I said, there's going to be, I wanna say three more videos coming in this series. So I'm gonna be going well more in depth into actually filming what it takes to go from inception to production and everything in between, as well as a whole video of my top 10 tips and tricks on how to make sure your YouTube channel is something you can be proud of. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.